playing a game that just came out uh, in early access today, on the 29th of... Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Isn't this, it's the early access to the beta of part one. No, 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 it's... The, the, the beta is the early access. That's a big thing. Or it's, it's, it's not... There's, That's no, a there's no beta. There's no... They're we, not don't, a beta. We, don't, we don't test games, games anymore. You just get it early. <laughs> Essentially, with, with all the problems. Uh, yeah, but you can by like, buying it, you like, get and like like preferences. No, yeah. no menu. <laughs> It'll be no there. option. It's a it's a placeholder. Because um, yeah, this game it's been in development since I think like the story of this game, like the guy. It's the moon landing, I think. Y yeah, <laughs> but as always, like, as soon as he got back to the moon, it's like I need to make a video <laughs> game to explain. My no, um, it is a remake of a game from 1995 called Buzz Aldrin's Race into Space. Which is a really fun game. Uh, this is a modern day representation of the game. Actually, I think the guy first started making this back in like 2008 or something, hmm. and then it's had a long development cycle. Um, yeah, Ignacio Livertronic. That guy. Yeah, uh, he's pretty cool. Um, you can talk to him on the forums. He's he's chill. I don't chill is not a word I use in my vocabulary. This is apparently you use it on the internet. <laughs> All right. I don't know. Anyways, um, so this game you uh, race into space. Yeah, it's you, a you simulate. It's a simulator of Buzz Aldrin. Yes, you are Buzz <laughs> Aldrin in this game. So first, there's a race to the moon, and you come back, and nobody believes you. And <laughs> you become a disgruntled, ornery old man who probably battles alcoholism and punches. People. He used to. He got Is he better now? Oh yeah, he got better. Oh, like in, that's in, good. In good for him. Yes. Let's play the game. Well, wait, wait, I want to explain. Um, <laughs> oh, this game it's in three parts. This is part one, the race to the moon, which covers like 1950s, the very beginning of space exploration through the moon landings, um, and then part two, which will come out later, assuming, will it is <laughs> Hopefully. like, is the space shuttle, which is in the 70s, through the International Space Station today, then part three is going to be basically like today through Mars landings oh. and all that. Um, and the development cycle right now is the game is going to be in early access for like two or three months, then we'll have the official version of the part one release, uh, and then after that, um, assuming part two. Mm -hmm. So anyways... Um, are you ready? Yes. All right. So I need to find a timer. Though. Oh, well, but you can make a game. Yeah. Uh, anyways, um, oh, you got one. Well, I used my phone. Oh, that's right. Anyways, um, so there's two ways to play the game. There's sandbox and campaign. Right now, um, campaign is not available yet because it's <laughs> still okay being made. So um, you mean there's one way to play the game at the moment? And considering there's no preferences, there's really just one way to play this <laughs> game. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, proceed. Go ahead. Uh, you want normal hard or buzz hard? <laughs> What's the description for Buzz uh, Hard? In this difficult level, you'll be afraid of a small amount of initial funding, so it won't be given much help or advice on how to achieve short or long term goals. Well, I think, our, I think we want to get to the moon, right? Yeah. Well, so let's do something that lets us. Let's m make it, it as hard as we, it can be I, while still allowing you to get to the moon. I think we should go with normal because I still know how to play the game. Like, yeah. I, I play it for about like 20 minutes. Well, it minutes. just came out, so. Yeah. Like, today, I just played for about 20 minutes. Okay. And like I get like the concept. It's hard like, enough obviously. to get to the moon. We don't need to make it <laughs> buzz hard. <laughs> I hope that becomes a thing, like in everyday speech. Like, oh man, I had a test. It oh, was like buzz uh, hard. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm not. I'm not making fun of it. It's just. It's no, that's it, hilarious. Yes, yeah, it's fun <laughs> calling something buzz hard. I hope other people adopt that. Be the change you want to see in the world. Yeah. Anyways, in the new Thief game, you, you play it on either ultra easy casual mode or buzz hard. <laughs> Which yeah. involves getting Garrett to the moon. <laughs> but Garrett, you don't have enough rocket boots. Uh, anyways, the GSA has been established and its first director has been appointed. That's us. The director will be in <laughs> charge of managing the bu agency's budget and taking mankind to new heights. Hmm. Uh, then we have a series of scientists, engineers, and technicians uh, available. They have been hired and trained. And we're going to gonna go to the moon. Okay. Proceed. Okay. So, uh, uh, welcome to the Buzz Aldrin Space Program Manager. Director of Space Program... Uh, it's 1955, sound has been broken, just started. Uh, so where are we right now? We look like we're in Florida. some... Florida? Okay. It doesn't really say. Um, <laughs> anyways, this is just stuff you can read. <laughs> yeah. We just it's just introducing the game, which we don't want to do. Anyways, Things cost money. Got it. Yeah. So down here we've got the budget, uh, your scientists, your technician, astronauts, and flight controllers. Which you, all, you need all those to have a successful space program. Uh, and right now, we like you can click on these just as they are now, but if you click on this button, it tells you what the stuff is. Ah. Uh, so yeah, there's a bunch of different complexes. Uh, right away, we're going to want to start building some stuff, because um, we have a lot of money at the start, and we need stuff to 
13,000. Is this accurate to how much money they were given in 1955? Like, were they only given 13,000? I think it probably I mean, a little bit more. Inflation has happened since yeah. the 50s, but I think they may have probably, gotten a little more yeah. money. Um, anyways, we're going to start by building an astronaut center so we can have astronauts, because um, apparently you need them for going there. <laughs> um, so build it two seasons. Well, not initially, five, right? Because, wait, 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 wait. Because we're just... Well, I'm assuming if we start with satellites and probes... Well, the first... I'll, I'll explain the first time we start with. Um, oh, we already built a torch. We need to upgrade it. Uh, click on this. No, I don't... Oh, that one. <laughs> Buttons. Already yelling at the controls. <laughs> you stupid <laughs> game! So, uh, anyways, right now, um, because we have... We have done no programs. We can do six programs, but they're on Earth. So we can get to Earth. Uh, we put a man on Earth. <laughs> okay. Uh, so the programs are Earth Orbital Research Satellites, Space Planes, and One Crew Ballistic cap Capsules. Mm -hmm. Space Planes are uh, the X-15, which is... It could go up to like the very edge of space and then come back down, as you can see by this graph here. Whereas you know the actual space capsule, the Mercury program, goes farther out. Oh. But we're going to start out with doing both um, initial satellites and uh, the X-15. Is the space capsule like, what's that one? Wow, who's that guy who jumped out of who like, the longest oh, height in like, different like the sixties? Yeah. Is that really, is that like the thing he went up in? No, oh. that was like never a, mind. Yeah, that's a different thing. But these are actual spacecraft. Whereas that just like was a balloon up to the very edge of the atmosphere. Yeah. Anyways, um, so I think I still wanted to build a couple more things. Um, we also want to build a. Uh, oh, it's night. Yeah, it changes. Does it move in? In like real, it, it's turns. Okay. So like down here is the end season button. It just it changes from night to day when you click back and forth between buildings sometimes. Oh, that has no bear. Like it has no actual bearing oh, okay. on how time progresses in the game. Um, but it's a new feature. Yeah. So we need to build a vehicle assembly building so we can build our stuff to send into space. Because without it, you're not going anywhere. What if we just skip that and just build the stuff right away? Yeah. Cut we'll, out the middle we'll man. Just build it in space. Cut out the. <laughs> yeah. And so that works. Um, no, I mean build it. We don't need a building to build it. We'll just build it. Well, like instead of like just go out in a field and assemble the space plane <laughs> and save money. <laughs> There's weather in my plane. <laughs> um, but no, we want to okay, build that. Okay. So let's click on this and let's get started with Earth Orbital Research Satellites. Um, we're gonna want to start with either Sputnik or Explorer One because these are more advanced ones. Uh, so which one do you want to do? Do you want to do Are Sputnik? Oh. Well, what are the differences? One? Uh, essentially not. Well, I don't really know. I don't think very much because the way this game works is that you're in charge of the global space agency, which is fictional, ah. and it's the idea that everyone's merged together. And they did that because they didn't want to have to make a U.S. one where you just use technology, U.S. technology, or just a Soviet one where just you just use technology, <laughs> as opposed to the other <laughs> space program that bars technology, <laughs> he uses magic, the ancient Magi cult <laughs> space program. <laughs> Like <laughs> didn't get very far in that one, I think. But no, the idea is that by combining them both, you can choose to use either Soviet, okay. like Sputnik, or U.S. So, it, okay. So I don't, I, like well, I said, I barely played it. I don't know if there's a real difference, but I do think Sputnik... Some Sputnik's pretty cool, and it was the first. So we should, just, we, we should go with that one. Okay, open, and there's a description here. Um, this program comprises one, it's just game. Uh, I think some of them have different... Anyways, open program. Uh, we do want to open that for five hundred twenty-five. Jeez, it's pretty cheap to get. <laughs> like we can run this in real life. I know. Like, uh, we've opened the program. If we just go back to nineteen eighty-five. Yeah. So we have opened the program, and now we can click over here on the two mission configurations. Right now, for the ones, it's just two. But as you get more technology and stuff, you can do different, like alternate history stuff. Because um, the way I'll explain this now. Okay. The way uh, Buzz Aldrin um, contributed to this game development is that. You can do the historical Mercury, then Gemini, then Apollo programs with lunar landers, or you can do alternate history stuff. So you could take a Gemini capsule to the moon and just land on it directly rather than having a lunar lander. And what Buzz did can was... Can you get back without it? Yes. It, <laughs> okay. Because there's alternate history technology built in. And what Buzz did was he went through and double-checked all of their um, in-game images and renders to make sure that what they made looked historically accurate. Mm -hmm. And um, because he knows so much about you know these space programs because he was part of them, uh, he can say you know, accurately whether or not the alternate history stuff would have been realistic had it actually been done. Oh. Um, so yeah, pretty cool. How do they continue while I'm at it? How do they, like, how does that come about where you just ask Buzz Aldrin to help you build your know. space game? I think what happened was um, this game originally was developed by one guy back in like 2000. He started, it was put on hold for a long time because he had his own life to do and I guess a bunch of stuff. And then it was picked up by a publisher. Uh, and I guess maybe they saw a connection that this is essentially a remake of Buzz Aldrin's Racing Space from 95, mm -hmm. 
and I guess I got a hold of him and I was like, yo, Buzz, which is, I assume, how they addressed him. <laughs> um, and, yeah, they got involved. Nice. He's really active, I think, in sort of um, promoting space education and awareness. Like, he has a company that just does that. Mm-hmm. So and he's like, oh, I'll help out with that and get the kids interested in space. Um, so Sputnik. Um, so uh, the stuff on the screen. Um, <laughs> what is so there's two. So wait, have we okay. We we started the program. We started the program. Well, we haven't done any uh, research uh, into it. Can I click this? Yeah. What does this do? That schedules the mission. That we need to finish the building before we do that. And plus, the thing <laughs> oh. is, if you look up here, um, well, that's information about what it needs. Average reliability for our components is zero percent. So we could launch, but it's basically a zero percent chance of success. What we want to do? <laughs> what is there's, there? There's no way. We know <laughs> with certainty. No divine intervention will even save this. This satellite. Because essentially, what we've done is we said we're going to do this, but we haven't done any of the work to actually do it. <laughs> Sounds about as much as I've <laughs> probably done for a space program. Yeah. Um, but anyways, we can click on. I've R- drawn some pretty sweet spaceships. Yeah. In my time. Yeah. In a Microsoft Paint. But we can click we on. Just contort them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, uh, anyways, so to this mission, there are two components. There is the R7 booster, which is the space rocket, uh, small size first gen rocket. And then there's Sputnik itself. And over here we can see reliability. There's current reliability, minimum reliability, huh? maximum R&D reliability, and maximum reliability. Uh, so what we want to do is assign R&D personnel. And then each turn of the game, they'll bring this up. Okay. Um, but also if there's something disaster happens, they have to bring it down and so on and so forth. I see. So we're going to go with our rocket. Mm-hmm. Um, and we just click on here. And these are the people we have to put in. Yeah. They've got um, different stats, different money. There's like portraits, but they're all silhouettes of like yeah. the same guy. <laughs> Do you think he just put in a bunch of applications to um, boost his chances of being assigned <laughs> to something? <laughs> no, is that going to be done later? Yeah, they're going to have um, okay. actual portraits. Uh, and actually, one thing that's really cool is there's three different pay levels for this game. There's a $19.99 version, which just gets you a digital download of the game. There's a $39 version, which is the one I got, which you get the game digitally a physical copy of the game and like some art booklets mm. and then if you really want to cash out cash in invest there's a $100 <laughs> level you can buy in and when you do that you can then choose to have your name and picture in the game as an astronaut or a scientist or a flight engineer or is this on like Kickstarter or no, Steam? It's, or it, it was made by a company get? called uh, Slytherin and they're part of it, like, it's not part of either of those it's it's oh, own okay. production distribution I just company. assume everything in this world is either on Steam Kickstarter or, or Steam, Steam. You'd think so. Uh, it's, it, it seems like a project that very easily could have been on that. But it's actually like made by a publishing... Or it, it's made by better people. <laughs> people with morals. No, we're it's above, above. We're above that. Yeah. No, it's made by um, a publishing company. So with these different stats, since we're building a rocket, we probably want to research or have the people who are high in rockets work on it. Um, so I'm going to say... Well, that first guy and that second person... Pretty high, so let's click in there. Harland and Dean. Let's get them in there. Um, and we can have four people working on this one. We had to pay them, I'm assuming. Yeah, they're, this guy gets paid twenty six dollars a, a, a turn. A season. A season. Yeah. <laughs> and each season is like three months. So to work. He's, the, he's not the making very much. To work much. the space mines. <laughs> yeah. um, let's put him in there, and then these guys. I think we should save for something else. That was well. You you put uh, Camila. Oh. And I'm no. just assuming. Yeah, that's right. That's a. Yeah. That's uh, and saying. then we can go over to Sputnik itself. And here, Space Probes is the most desirable one. So we're going to put Valerie in there because okay. she's got high. Uh, Adeline. I'm not going to use her. Um, so what we're going to do is go back to Space Complex, click on the SET Center, SET Center, Science, Engin- or Science Engineers and Technology. Okay. Uh, and here, um, once the selection is complete, we're going to... Yeah, so we can hire people. We can click on yeah. here, find their stats. We've already hired... Oh, no, no, these are the people hire. we have hired. We can go hire more yeah. personnel, and then this is where we hire. I see. So we want people who are high in space probes. Dude, rockets. Claudio is like has really good balanced and high levels of everything. We're gonna hire him. But he's also pretty expensive. Well, we gotta pay. He's he's over twice <laughs> as much as Sal. Well, that's why we're gonna hire him. Uh, but but he he's really good at EVA suits. Yeah. Please. What's your name? I think we should also hire.